Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has received a cable of congratulations from Her Royal Highness the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, following the SCW selection as winners of the Honorary Award for Excellence in Caring for Arab Family 2020, granted by the Arabia Corporate Social Responsibility Network. Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika extended deepest congratulations to His Majesty the King for this prestigious award, expressing her pride in His Majesty King Hamlet's supportive stances towards the SCW since his directives to establish it 20 years ago. She stressed that the SCW has been committed to assuming its responsibilities of enhancing the status of Bahraini women and families, being the cornerstone of the nation's cohesion and stability, in order to meet the royal expectations in this regard. Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika pointed out that the Kingdom has been appreciated at a time when it is harnessing all potential to overcome the challenges resulting from the novel coronavirus COVID-19 and mitigate the impacts and the stability of the Bahraini family. The SCW President valued highly the commendable efforts exerted by Team Bahrain, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to ensure the safety and health of the citizens and residents. Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika wished Bahrain more successes and pray to Allah the Almighty to bless His Majesty the King with abundant health and long life. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of thanks to Her Royal Highness the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, in reply to her congratulatory cable on SEW selection as winner of the Honorary Award for Excellence Incurring for Arab Family 2020 which is granted by the Arabia Corporate Social Responsibility, the CSR network. His Majesty the King lauded the role of Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa and her efforts in promoting contributions of Bahraini women in various fields of national work. He stressed the key role played by Bahraini women in the Kingdom's progress and boosting its international status. He asserted that this constructive role of Bahraini women, spearheaded by Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika, has always been a source of pride for its importance in boosting national growth and prosperity. His Majesty the King pointed out that the Arab honour to SCW coincides with the ongoing efforts of the Kingdom of Bahrain in determination to combat coronavirus. He praised the efforts of the National Task Force for combating coronavirus COVID-19 under the leadership of His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier in the respect to protect people's health and safety. In a ceremony as part of the Conference on Social Support to Arab Families, in light of the pandemic, the International Federation for Social Responsibility and the Arabia Corporate Social Responsibility Network announced the Supreme Council for Women for the Honorary Award for Excellence in Caring for Arab Family 2020. During the ceremony, the organisers expressed appreciation for the ongoing efforts of the SCW and the leadership of Her Royal Highness, wife of His Majesty the King, President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa. The Secretary General of the SCW, Hala Alansari, expressed thanks and appreciation for selecting the Council to win the award. She said that this represents a happy moment for Bahrain and described this achievement as a result of national efforts to promote the rights of families. Alansari said the SCW is keen on promoting women's interests, rights and aspirations, is working toward making Bahrain a centre of expertise in this field. The Chairman of the Board of the International Federation for Social Responsibility praised the efforts of Her Royal Highness Princess Bika and the SCW in safeguarding the stability of families. The event was also attended by the Assistant Secretary of the General of the SCW, Sheikh Adina bin Rashid Al Khalifa, who gave a presentation on the efforts of the SCW during the pandemic. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs National Security Advisor and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, the SCYS, His Majesty Sheikh Naz bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the equestrian sport in Bahrain has become a role model through the global participations in gathering many achievements due to the care of the sport received from His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Naz appraised the new achievement made by the King of Bahrain in its abroad participation through the victory of the horse, the Golden Horde, of the stables of Mohammedia owned by Sheikh Sultan al-Din bin Mohammed al-Khalifa, which came first in the place at Royal Ascot Festival in the British city of Ascot. His Highness Sheikh Nasser congratulated Sheikh Sultan al-Din and cited such victory to be a motive for further achievements in future events.
Golden Hoard, the horse that belongs to the stables of Mohammed Dia Racing, achieved a victory for Bahraini Equestrian in global tournaments by coming first place in the main race at the Royal Ascot Festival. This is the first victory for the horse Golden Hoard in this international race, and the victory came as a successful start to the horses of the stables Mohammed Dia, led by His Highness Sheikh Sultan Adin bin Mohammed Al Salman Al Khalifa, in the season of its global participation in the British and European tracks. Sheikh Sultan Al Din was keen to follow the course of the light in the light of his interest in continuous support of the sport of horse racing. The victory of Golden Horde was hand in hand with strong performance from jockey Adam Murphy and under the supervision of Cliff Cox, that was able to compete with a large group of horses from different international stables. The victory comes as a continuation of the great and honourable victories achieved by Bahraini stables in international races in recent years. Golden Horde leads on the near side in company with Southern Hills. Kimari being asked to improve. Godolphin Blue of Royal Crusade over on the far side. Uh, Royal Lytham trying to get involved with Aberama Golden Mill Isle. Near side Golden Horde from Royal Crusade. Kimari is battling on bravely, but it's still Golden Horde towards the near side that has the advantage with a furlong to go. Golden Horde from Kimari, the pair of them pulling away. Royal Commando trying to stay on in company as well with Ventura Rebel. Golden Horde's been up there every single step of the way and will make just about all on the near side to win for Adam Kirby and the Labour and Social Development Ministry has announced that all preparations have been made to begin supervision of implementation of Ministerial Edict 39 of 2013 on banning outdoor afternoon work in July and August. Labour and Social Development Minister Jamil bin Mohammed Al Hamidan affirmed that Bahrain is a leader in ensuring secure and safe work environment for workers out of its keenness on their safety and health at various production sites, noting that the implementation of outdoor afternoon work ban is the best means to achieve that goal. He pledged zero tolerance against violators, noting that in the case the violation is repeated, the penalty will be doubled, as stipulated by the ministerial edict. The minister indicated that an average of 98% of the private sector companies had complied with the ban in past years, which, he said, proves the employer's commitment to ensuring a safe and decent work environment for employees. The annual ban prohibiting outdoor work from midday until 4pm during July and August months aims to safeguard workers' health, ensure the safety against heat exhaustion and sunstroke, as well as prevent summer-related diseases and to reduce occupational incidents in view of the increasing temperatures and humidity, in line with the Kingdom's commitment to human rights principles, especially regarding the need to provide secure and healthy work environment. The University of Bahrain held a remotely held conference on the solar eclipse that is expected to take place on June the 21st, under the patronage of the President of the University, Riyad Yusuf Hamza, in cooperation with the Bahrain Astronomical Society. The conference was held a total of nine sessions that discussed various angles of the subject matter and was attended by various specialists in the field from Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi requested today the army to stand prepared to carry out any mission inside or outside the country if necessary. Addressing the military forces at the Western Military Region, President al-Sisi said that many unknown activities are taking place in the western border with Libya, adding that Egyptian air, border and special forces have been securing the 1,200 kilometre border for seven years, where he watched fighter jets and helicopters taking off. The president added that the Egyptian army is one of the strongest armies in the region. Earlier this month, Egypt called for a ceasefire in Libya as part of an initiative which also proposed an elected leadership council for the country. The United States, Russia and the UAE welcomed the plan. Germany said UN-backed talks were the key to the peace process. Saudi Arabia will lift its coronavirus restrictions across the country tomorrow, June the 21st, the latest effort by the Kingdom to return to normalcy. The Interior Ministry announced today that all economic and commercial activities will be allowed to resume, given their tier to precautionary measures. The Ministry added that international travel will be suspended until further notice, noting that land and sea borders will also remain closed. The Interior Ministry also said that entry into the country for Umrah pilgrimage in Mecca or for tourism will continue to be halted. It stressed that social distancing measures must be enforced and that gatherings of no more than 50 people are strictly prohibited. The Kuwaiti Ministry of Health reported 467 more infections with the novel coronavirus COVID-19, taking the country's count of confirmed cases to 39,145. 
Six more people also died from the infectious respiratory illness over the past 24 hours, raising Kuwait's death toll due to the virus to 319 so far. The latest cases include 268 Kuwaiti citizens, while the remaining patients belong to several other nationalities. In addition, a total of 8,100 patients are still receiving medication in hospitals, while the 180 others are languishing in intensive care units. Health officials urge citizens and residents to follow health and preventative guidelines and measures, especially social distancing. Earlier, the Ministry of Health confirmed the recovery of 536 additional COVID-19 patients, bringing the overall count of recoveries to 30,726. The United Arab Emirates recorded 388 new coronavirus cases, a number in line with its relatively low daily increases over the last week. Health authorities reported one further death, bringing the total of 301 and 758 more recoveries. The new cases were diagnosed as part of the UAE's ongoing testing programme, with authorities saying they tested 38,000 people in the last 24 hours. The number of new cases is on the same as on Thursday, when authorities reported 388 new coronavirus cases after 40,000 COVID-19 tests were conducted. The following day reported a slightly higher number of 393 new coronavirus cases, but still a much lower rate than the previous weeks. The head of Dubai's COVID-19 Command and Control Centre, Dr. Ama Ahmed Sharif, said that the rate of infection has been considerably falling in the country in the last three weeks. The Sultanate of Oman reported 896 new cases of coronavirus COVID-19 and bringing the total infection cases in the country to 28,566. The official Oman news agency said that the total infection cases included 391 Omani citizens and 505 expatriates, adding that among them were 14,780 patients who have recovered. The World Health Organization chief Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus said the new coronavirus pandemic is now in a new and dangerous phase, with the disease accelerating at the same time as people tire of lockdowns. In a virtual press conference, he urged nations and citizens to remain extremely vigilant as the number of cases reported to the UN Health Agency hit a new peak. The pandemic is accelerating. More than 150,000 new cases of COVID-19 were reported to WHO yesterday, the most in a single day so far. Almost half of those cases were reported from the Americas, with large numbers also being reported from South Asia and the Middle East. The, the world is in a new and dangerous phase. Many people are understandably fed up with being at home. Countries are understandably eager to open up their societies and economies. But the virus is still spreading fast. Continue maintaining your distance from others. Stay home if you feel sick. Keep covering your nose and mouth when you cough. Wear a mask when appropriate. Keep cleaning your hands. We continue to call on all countries to focus on the basics. Find, isolate, test, and care for every case. Trace and quarantine every contact. China reported no deaths but affirmed that 27 people got infected with COVID-19. The Chinese news agency said that the daily death tally remained at 4,634, while contamination cases climbed to 83,352 since outbreak of the pandemic in the nation in January last year. It reported 23 locally transmitted infections, including 22 in the capital Beijing and a single case in northern province of Hebei. No cases were reported in central province of Hubei, epicentre of the pandemic outbreak in China. China said four of the cases were of persons who had returned from abroad, noting that daily tally of such cases reached 1,868. Twelve patients were discharged from hospitals in the past 24 hours, with a total amounting to 78,410. It added that 308 patients continue to receive medical treatment and 6,023 others have remained under medical observation after mingling with infected individuals.